All righty, let's go. We are here. Welcome, everyone. This is the DC Incentives Podcast. And uh, you know who we have right beside me. We have my other Jose. You know, she usually don't really be, you know, in front of the camera. But, yeah. you know, today she wants to make an exception in everything. Um, you needed as, backup. Yeah. Admit it. You needed backup. You were terrified. <laughs> <laughs> There was a whole lot of dead air going on there and going on. We're just still hanging there. Nah, nah still going. Zay, you see, see, Zay is the boss. <laughs> Zay is the boss. She, she's the one that says, I need this done. I need this done on this podcast. That, that's, you know, she's the boss. She's there the one go. that comes Keeping in. Keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be but, able to break multiple goals. We know that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so everyone, we have a uh, guest. And uh, let's get a little drum blow. Do, 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 do. Please introduce mm -hmm. yourself. Awesome. So I'm Michelle Nedlock. I'm the creative director of my company, Awareness Strategies. And we do automated tech done for you, meaning that we will help you to get everything from your leads all the way through to creating, creating raving fans. And we automate the process as much as we can without dehumanizing it so that you're Ideal clients are getting their ideal journey, and you get to go and play in the fun jam that you love to play in. Okay, so to talk about a little brief bio of yourself. Who you know for our listeners? Who who are you? More of yourself. You know, how did you get started in your business? Give you this jam, excellent. So. Back in 2003, my partner and I in business and pleasures, we like to say, started a personal development company. It was a training company where we had, uh, basically we had found Bob Proctor, if you want to put it that way. And when he talked about the, there are rules of success and when you are laws of success and when you live by the laws of nature that govern success, success becomes inevitable. And we thought, well, that's kind of neat. So let's go and check it out and see what happens. And we did that and we decided, hey, everybody needs to know this. So we started a personal development training company. Fast forward to 2015 or so, we had to go online. And what we found out was that online marketing is totally different from traditional marketing in that you can't be a generalist. So the laws of success doesn't mean anything online. Nobody searches for that typically unless they know that that's something they should be looking for. So somehow, some way we had to pivot. I had to pivot. And through the whole process of going online, Brad, because of his background, no, my background was scattered and we can go into that totally. But we uh, did some marketing recently and discovered that I've had 28 career pivots in my career. <laughs> I was pivoting before pivoting was cool and I was doing it a lot more than most probably should. Um, but what that allowed me to do is become an awesome executive coach because I can relate to people in all industries. I realized that there are certain patterns of business that are true no matter what. There's certain pillars of business. We can get into that later. But business is essentially business. Um, Brad, on the other hand, had a career from high school straight out and is still a computer geek. He loves all things computer programming. So for years, he was doing the big computer rollouts, the huge uh, business solutions for the IBMs and the Halliburtons of the world, you know, three-year projects, multi-million projects, tons of people, tons of servers, all that kind of fun jazz. So when I was doing my online thing and talking to other people about what they needed to do to change to get into the online world, it's a, it was really tech heavy at that time, which is kind of funny because it wasn't that long ago. Um, and in some aspects, not a lot has changed. So I said, well, instead of going, hey, do we want to do, you know, speak, how to speak from stage, how to run a business, how to whatever, why don't we just do a tech done for you company? Because clearly a lot of people need help in this area and the help they were getting was haphazardous at best. And uh, we can certainly talk about the industry and <laughs> what, I, what I just like about it and what my pet peeves are. But for people to be able to get somebody that's knowledgeable in the area of tech that understands business that can help them to go, Hey, you don't need to be doing this, that, and the other thing, but you do need to be doing something over here because this is where your audience is looking for you. And to be able to get that kind of help was immense to people. So Brad was all up for it. I was up for it. So that's what we did. We pivoted at that time. 
I was doing more of the creative side of the business. So I do, I help businesses with their, the writing, their graphics, their videos, kind of, and the strategy of where they want to go. And then he runs the tech side of the company with anything that has to do with an acronym. <laughs> so we'll keep that one short. So uh, that's what we did. We've had a ton of fun. We've helped everybody from solopreneurs up to, uh, I want to say, $25 million clients. Um, and we've noticed that there's certain pockets of, kind of people that need certain help depending on how they're running their businesses and all that kind of fun stuff. We can certainly talk about that because I think depending on where somebody is in their business, they need to understand what they need to be doing. And it's not the same for everyone. It's not a cookie cutter process. You really need to have somebody just look at your business and go, Hey, here's what you need now. And this is where we're going to take you from here. So that's what we've been doing. We've been having a ton of fun with it. And right now our focus is kind of on the, the companies between one and 20 million because right now they need to position themselves for a change in business and they don't tend to be as fast on the change as the solopreneurs are or as established as the 10 to 20 million dollar companies so they're in a unique little position right now and we just want to be able to help that's good wow okay. so so talk about more about helping solo entrepreneurs because when it comes to solo entrepreneurs they are like you know they do everything they're the the marketer they they uh, head bottle you know, washer you know, they, they do everything so yeah. t- talk about more about you helping out solo entrepreneurs absolutely so when solopreneurs start their businesses they usually have an awesome idea that they sometimes will stop themselves because of something that they don't understand how to do in their business. And it could just be, you know, I don't know how to do Facebook. I don't know how to put up a graphic. It doesn't have to be immensely difficult. And ironically, I didn't get my first podcast out for three years because I didn't understand the tech behind. Well, I didn't understand where to put my (laughs) my feeds, which is really silly because I used to create websites, programming websites with RSS feeds in them. So it's not like I didn't know what the elements of it were. I just, there was this thing that blocked me from not being able to do that. And until I had somebody go, hey, here's how you do it. Here's the button you push. Here's the video you watch. I didn't put my stuff in place. And I had a team of people that I could have just said, hey, go do some research. Where do I put this? And let's get rocking and rolling. So I totally understand that when we we let the certain things get in our way, uh, it can be overwhelming in a business. So, and the key I've found is to really in podcasting, especially is to watch podcasts like this, listen to podcasts that allow you to be able to get some information that can take you one step closer, one step closer. Who do I actually need to talk to to actually get this thing done? Like who knows that button to push? Um, and, and obviously with YouTube, that becomes a lot more (laughs) beneficial too. that. You can just look up, how do I do this and sit there and watch your videos and go and do the thing. Um, but really when it comes down to mindset of kind of, how do you want to place this out? So somebody that's going into coaching is going to have a totally different layout of how their business gets placed out than somebody that goes, Hey, I want to sell bandanas online, right. Or whatever. It's, it's a totally different way of marketing and Amazon selling unto itself is a totally different beast. But there's certain elements of digital marketing that apply there uh, in order to be a good Amazon seller versus a mediocre Amazon seller. And if somebody can learn that on their social media platforms as well, then you can start to catapult. There are certain elements. And really the best and easiest and fastest one is understanding what your customer wants as opposed to what you're selling. So I'm going to run on the bandana thing just because it popped in my head. I don't know why it did. Sometimes it's lemonade stand. Sometimes it's God knows what. But when you're, when somebody's selling something, I can go, wow, this is really pretty. I just made this, you know, batik uh, bandana. It's awesome. You guys will love it. You know, it's beautiful. You can wear it here, there, and everywhere. And meanwhile, they're looking for what are the dimensions of it. I want to know if it's going to be able to you know, cover my head. I want to know what the size packaging is, whether or not it's going to fit in my mailbox. Like they have different questions than I'm giving answers. And that's when it becomes really important in marketing is if you can wrap your head around what your potential clients problems are. And I, I'm going to back up the bus just a little bit, because when we were doing the Bob Proctor seminars, I hated 
hate it, hate it. Negative selling. I did not want to do it. I did not want to go there. I'm like, no, people are going to focus on the negative. That's not what I want them focusing on. I'm going to change the world and I don't want to do that. And in online marketing, you have to be willing to look at the negative marketing because that's what people are looking for. They're looking to solve the problems that they have and that's how they're searching for it. So you have to, first off, wrap your head around that. Second of all, wrap your head around the idea that you can go to people and don't ask your brothers, your cousins, your sister-in-law what they think of your idea. Go to people that are actually going to put money down on your idea because it's the people that are paying to get your stuff whose opinion matters. Nobody else's opinions, as lovely as they are and as important as they might be to you, it's not significant. The only people whose opinion matter in business are your clients, the ones that are paying you. I'm not saying clients always right. <laughs> we can get into that later too, but their opinions are the only ones that matter. And if you're in an agreement with what they're saying, that's where you want to go for your marketing. So if you're just brand spanking new, you have an idea, you haven't done anything with it yet, start test marketing, start finding the people that would buy your thing and start asking them questions and ask more questions than you spend money inventing something or realizing something because the secret to online one is your potential clients pain and two asking more questions than you give solutions especially initially because you're going to waste a lot of time and effort putting stuff into things if i go and make a ton of really bright bandanas and nobody wants them they're all like oh we would really love camouflage i'm like Okay, not where I was going with it, but you know, it's like completely opposite of what I thought I was doing with this. But okay, and if I'm willing to go there, then all right, those are the kind of business decisions I have to be willing to make. And I want to make those decisions before I put a lot of money into dyes and you know machinery, things like that. Let's go. Cool. Let's go. Let's go. Get her, Zay. Well, she touched on the marketing because I was going to ask yeah. good positive ways Yo, to do she marketing. Just, <laughs> she just oh, like, I can go oh, into time. Left, right. That was not that right, was left, left, shit. Left, right, left, right. Left, right. right. <laughs> Uppercut. Yeah. Like, you, you just touched on it. Like, so, so, because uh, online marketing mm -hmm. is a beast unto itself. And, and I could be here for, <laughs> I was teasing you earlier that I didn't know how you're going to get me to talk for two hours, but it, it, just on that alone, it, it ain't that hard. Between <laughs> online marketing and traditional <laughs> marketing is fantastical because I can go out and one, I have to build the thing first before I sell it. Right. I, if I go into anywhere, if I go into a street market, if I go somewhere and selling my bandanas, I have to have bandanas. I can't have pictures of them and go, Hey, do you want to order one? Whereas online I can Photoshop or go into Canva now and just make shit up and, and put pictures up there. And, and if somebody likes the camouflage more than they like the pink and purple one, then I just start making the camouflage ones. Cause that's what they're buying. Right. And you don't want to to put the money in first, whereas traditionally you had to. You couldn't sell something without having it so that people could touch it, smell it, taste it and, you know, yeah. get an experience of it. Now I could have a whole marketing platform around bandanas that I just made up 55 seconds ago, all about the significance of, you know, uh, wearing my colors and they're bright and making other people's day. And you know, when you look at somebody and they have bright colors on and how you smile and we want to make the better, world a better place. And this is why we're doing this. Like I can make stuff up in my head yeah, now cool. and then and have it on, test it on the market and see whether or not it sells and be selling them by the end of the month. So when it comes down to market, I'm going to choose instead of a bandana, I'm going to say yeah. where, you know how some people may, they actually make some type of products, meaning like a uh, hair, like uh, skincare or hair products. Or how would the best way would they market? It would just be maybe a video of this is how this looked before, and you'll see somebody using the product or something. So super cool story. I just interviewed a guy on Friday about um, adhesives for wigs and hair products. Mm. And what they've done is they've come up with this adhesive that sticks, but it doesn't rip your skin off when you, when you take off the hair piece, which as anybody knows, if they've ever had anything, you know, Halloween stuff, it, yeah. guys in particular, Halloween, you stick a beard on and at the end of the day, or worse, the morning after you're trying to rip it off without ripping your face off. It's brutal. Yes. So these guys have come up with this stuff and it's awesome for somebody that has to wear a wig just, you know, because of, you know, thinning hair or whatever, 
or um, people that have cancer want to be able to maintain kind of a look of having hair, whatever the case might be, um, they have this product and they white label it. So somebody can go in and talk to them and say, hey, I want to sell your stuff and I'm going to go into this one market. I want to go into a market for, I use me saying aging women with thinning hair. So that's my, that's my target market. I'm going to go in, I'm going to find out everything I can about women. You know, I'm going to say 45 to 75 Caucasian who have thinning hair, who like, well, what are all of their issues? Because their issues are going to be totally different than dudes issues, which are going to be totally different than, you know, somebody that just wants to wear it for Halloween. So I'm going to go and find some of their problems and I'm going to start creating a story of writing things about that and finding those people online saying, hey, have you ever had this issue? Do you know it? And start doing some market research on it. And their answers are going to start giving me the solutions that I need. And if I find something that they say, I'm going to go back to the manufacturer and go, hey, I'm getting a lot of this question. Do you guys have an answer for that? Or do you know anybody that does? And if they don't have it, then I might start looking at other places to market it are not another place to market. I might look at other places to market other manufacturers to purchase it from. I can start doing a whole lot of research as to what I want to do without hiring any, you know, chemists, without hiring scientists, without understanding any of that. I don't have to understand any of that. I just have to want to bring it to market. If I happen to have something like makeup that I've, you know, magically mastered in my in my kitchen or my bathroom i'd start with videos on instagram absolutely because that's where you're going to start telling your story and people get a chance to be able to see it and watch it and and instagram tends to be the one right now and tiktok where um people want to watch stuff transformations like that happen gotcha so i want to bring back when you said about canva let's talk about yep. uh so okay, so our solo entrepreneurs, let, let, for our audience, let's let's yeah. help them out real quick. So yeah. so when they become solo entrepreneurs and when they find their niche, mm -hmm. what about when when they're creating the Canva, the graphic design, or let's say if they're editing something, the time consumptions, and they get you know tired of that, and they're like. Listen, I, I need a team. I, I need someone instead of like doing this, you know, for myself. Like, what would you say to lack? Like, what's the advice for them? It, again, it totally depends on where they're at in business and what they're doing it for. So some people will waste a lot of time doing social media for the sake of doing social media. Oh, I have to put something up every two days because somebody told me I do. It's totally not true. Um, you do have to put up things on Facebook that are non-promotional because Facebook's algorithm right now, as of the recording of this, this could change in tomorrow, <laughs> keep in mind, as of the recording of this, Facebook right now wants you to have um, kind of conversational or organic conversations with your people as well as promotional ones. So if all you're doing is promoting your stuff, they're going to shut you down. So you have to throw in some cat videos, proverbial cat videos, like it'd be whatever you want, but something that's not... Like, hey, come watch my stuff. Hey, come buy my stuff. Um, and if somebody is creating a makeup product, it works awesomely because that almost never gets flagged as promotional with um, with Facebook, unless you have a link saying, hey, go buy my stuff. Uh, but you can talk about it and, and, and tell them, you know, what the website is or whatever. And that doesn't get flagged right now. Um, going back to that. So you're, you're creating your, your stuff. So make sure one, it's not just silly, busy work because silly, busy work, if it doesn't get you sales at the beginning, um, you really have to be conscientious of what you're doing. I totally get it that you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff and trying to see what sticks and what works. Um, and that's the fun part of that phase. So absolutely embrace that, but just make sure that like 90% of your time isn't on things that aren't going to end up materializing for you. So one, figure out what makes you money on it. And maybe it's the the editing of the videos. Let's go with that one. So you're doing your makeup and you find out that videos that have some fun stuff going on them, like the little cats and the graphics and stuff coming on um, adds to your videos and those ones actually sell. Great. Now you want, now you know what you want somebody else to do. You can do things like go to Fiverr and just get somebody to do it one off which can work fantastically. I know a gal 
who runs a very successful business and she still goes to Fiverr to get somebody to just one off her stuff because she found really good people in Fiverr and she only needs them when she needs them. So the the way that contract works works fantastically well. So you can pay somebody, you know, 20 bucks to do a little 30 second video, put some graphics on there and off you go. That might have been a high <laughs> um, target, but you get the idea of it. So you're not doing it all the time. If you find that it's working so well that you want to hire somebody and train them how to do that on a full time basis, VAs are absolutely fantastic, wonderful. Um, and really, right now, you could probably train your you know, 15 year old niece how to do that. <laughs> and they, they would tend to work for a lot cheaper, which is a lot more fun too. And you're educating them at the same time how to do that. Um, so those kind of things, you, you, you want to figure out ways to bootstrap or get the thing done without having to give as much um, time to training. So if you've done it once, videotape yourself doing it so that when you train somebody else to do it, you can go here, watch this video, see what I did. And I kind of explain what I'm looking for in it, especially if you're an Instagrammer, you're Instagramming to your, to your prospects. Think of it as Instagramming to your, um, your help, your hired help. And you just want to make it as fun and easy for them to know what button you hit and what you click and what you're looking for, things you want to avoid. And you want to talk through that in your videos because it's, it's those little things that people don't train their people on while they're doing it is what am I looking for when I'm editing? And this applies, by the way, if you run a million dollar company and you're training somebody, these are the things that people miss in their training videos is what are you thinking while you're doing it? It's not just I hit this button and then I go here and this is how I make this picture bigger and smaller. It's and this is what I'm looking for. I want white space here. I don't want the graphics to cover their face at all. I don't I want to be able to see their eyes. I want to be able to see their lips. I want to be able to, especially when they say words that are difficult for people to understand, make sure we're not covering up their lips because then they can't read it. And when you explain how you think while you're doing something, people will not only get better at what they do faster, they'll catch on to what you're asking them for. Your message will become clearer and more articulate in what you actually want of them. Because so many times, if you don't give them that, they're going to give you back something that, that seems like total crap. And you're like, did you not hear what I asked you to do for me? Like, where the hell did this come from? But we've all done that. I, I was years in, <laughs> I don't know how to articulate what I'm asking you to do because I ask you to do stuff and everything that comes back is crap. That's on me. That's not on them. That was totally on me because I wasn't explaining what I was thinking about how I wanted the thing done. So the faster you can figure out how to do that when you're training somebody, uh, the better. Whether you decide to go with Fiverr, Instagram, Offshore, you know, a VA, a video editor. You can go to a professional video editor. If you give them that video, then they know what you're looking for and they can uh, deliver it better. Gotcha. That was that was that was like a 360 bars right there. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was 360 My job bars. is to just like I sit back, relax, and chill out here. Right. <laughs> that hours. was definitely so th this is the type of episode that y'all need to get a pen in the pad for what she is saying. Especially when she talked about Fiverr, uh virtual assistant. It's yeah, it's that type. Yeah, this is gonna be an <laughs> episode where you're gonna have to replay this. About like three times to be yeah. like, hold on, what did she that. Just say? hold on, I got it. Yeah, let's go, yeah. let's go. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, Zay, talk, uh, questions. Well, yeah, and let's talk about videos because I think that's another one too that people get messed up on is, yes. oh, but my hair's not right, but I don't look at it. Yeah, you know, oh, I'm back sick today. I can't do the video. <laughs> Yes, you can. Just do that video. No, it's there is a, especially now with TikTok, there is a variety of ways to do your videos. And one of them is just get out there and do it. If you've got something you've got to say and you want to get out and say it, say it. So let's go back to the makeup thing. And you're doing something and all of a sudden it's completely awry. Your eyes are crying. You don't know why. It's a mess. Grab your phone, get on there and go, hey, I was just doing my makeup. I don't know what happened. I started <laughs> <laughs> and I, I decided I'm going to start filming this so that you guys can see what happens. You know, not everybody has perfect makeup days and that's okay. Here's how I fix this. And so you're taking the thing that is raw and real and wrong and turning it into a learning opportunity for your peeps. Because if they get your makeup and they put it on and they start crying, 
they're going to lose their minds and they're going to go, Oh my God, this is crap. I want to return this. And right. So you want to stop that kind of thing from happening. So you want to be able to educate people on how do you deal with those things? So clearly in that video, you're not going to look your best. Your hair is not going to be done. There's a cat in the background. You might even have a bra hanging up on the towel rack. So what? (laughs) Everybody's entertained by it. And they're like, Oh, that's hilarious. Did you see that? Now all of a sudden your video goes viral because you got a stupid bra hanging off the towel rack. And it may not be the reason you wanted to go viral, but people are still seeing your videos. And in marketing like that, you almost can't go wrong. Any reason to go viral is a good reason at that point. So there's those kind of videos. And those ones don't need to be edited. They don't need to be anything. You just put them up, maybe throw you know your name and bumper on them and send them to TikTok and on their way they go. Then there's other ones that you're, you might want to make a little more fun and a little more um, you know, the, the graphics and the cats and things like that. And those tend to be the educational videos where you might have something that seems a little dry. It's like, oh, did you know the chemical composition of this makeup? It's like, one, no, two, did I care? Um, and that's where you start putting the words on, right? So that people understand what the word is and why it's important and stuff like that. The only time you really need to go into professional video today is in if you want to market something in a, an arena where like you're doing an ad or something like that, you might want to have a little scissor reel. So you might want to get somebody that's a professional editor to take snippets of your past videos and turn them into something glossy, have some stuff called B roll. B roll is anything where it's not you talking. So it could be a video of your cup going by or your makeup and and that's your B-roll. So it makes it a little more entertaining to watch those videos. And somebody that's good at that will understand what the elements are and what you're looking for. If you do those badly, it's a waste of money. So those kind of things can be worth going to a professional video editor and going, hey, how much is it going to cost me to have you know, 30 seconds of edited final video track? And that might be something that you decide you want to invest on, but you do it in a very specific I know that this product, um, you know, if they click onto this landing page, I have 20% people buying it. Awesome. That's when you want to invest in something like that, when you know it's going to turn into uh, a return on the end. So you want to be know that you're going to make money off it, not going on hope and prayer that you're going to make money off it. Hope and prayer is doing stuff like this, just getting on video and, and putting it out there. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Go ahead, Zay. No, I have no right. idea. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm right. I'm 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 okay. Still like, okay. So, so let's let's go to when about stra- uh having a stra- stra- strategy, strategy, right? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even get it. <laughs> What what number what, one, do not freeze your tongue before you go on the air and try and say that word. <laughs> oh, see, you taught me some. I'm saying <laughs> let's go. Uh-huh. Oh, so what made you uh how, how can uh for your business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how can they be like, hey, you know, entrepreneurs be like, hey, um, I need some help. Um, or anything or like how can they reach out to you or you know or someone from your team or anybody um, oh absolutely help. so is it okay if I give your peeps a gift yes excellent so we have a website audit for you guys so anybody that has a website that's up um, this will apply to it uh, you go in there and you put your website in and you got to wait about 10 15 minutes or so depending on the size of your website because it will actually go in and scale um, look at your actual website and give you actual feedback for it. So it does take a little bit to do. It's not instant. And what that does is it'll give you your green lights, your yellow lights, and your red lights, according to the Google gods, where it comes to your traffic. So just like street lights, your green lights, traffic's able to go there. When people are searching on it, Google puts it up on the searches. And for the most part, everybody else follows Google at this point. So if what applies to them will apply to everybody else as well. Uh, if you have any yellow lights out there, Google is slowing your traffic down. And that usually comes to marketing wording or your design elements. So what they're looking for right now is an easy page to flow down where people are 
flowing down your page. They're not just bouncing off of right away. They're actually reading the content that's there and that it's visually appealing to them. So that's awesome. But there could be a few things that you want to change. Um, typically, things that people don't do are put in H1, H2, and that means there are headers in your titles. And Google wants to know that those are headers, not just bold um, text. So things like that that you want to just be able to change up to um, so that Google knows that that's going on. You may get some red lights and red lights is where Google is stopping your traffic. And when that happens, it usually has something to do with acronyms, which I just go, whatever, um, SSLs, DMARCs, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so at the end of that report, I give you a link to set up a time to meet with me and I will explain in English what the report means so that you can go back and, and take care of each item, uh, make decisions on what you want to change and what you don't. And um, just, We'll get together and talk strategy and see where you're at in your business and what might be some good next moves for you. Okay, definitely. All right. So now that you talked about the Google, talked about, because people might know, do you know anything about SEO? The I know what? a little bit. What would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> the what, what, Again, okay. we could be here for two days just on that. <laughs> okay, so what? Yep. what is the SEO? What is that? Awesome question. So SEO as an acronym means search engine optimization. And what it that means is, is that uh, the search engines, Google's, SGVs, whatever, are mm -hmm. all running on algorithms in the background to see when people do a search and we show you this page, which pages do you tend to click on and which ones do you tend to stay on? And as they study that data, they want to present you with the most productive pages that uh, a search can have. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work so well. Uh, and I can give you examples of both for sure. But what you want to do, so SEO is the overarching title of it. And right now that tends to be, like I said earlier, with the design, with your anything that has to do with acronyms. So your HH, making sure your headers are right, making sure that your images have proper descriptions. Right now, one of the things that Google as a business is looking at doing is they want to, uh, they want to have an organization of basically all of the photos <laughs> on the planet. So the more they know what that picture is, the better ranking it's gonna get. So for instance, if I were to take a snapshot of this, of us right now, I would make sure that I have all of our names on that picture and then save it as, you know, Michelle Nedlock from Awareness Strategies on David Cash podcast with Zay and, um, and have your names there so that when Google finds that picture, they know exactly what's in that picture. It's not just, you know, a screenshot or screenshot 345 <laughs> top thing because that doesn't mean anything to them. So you want to save your pictures as what they are. And then when you put them up to your website, you want to make sure that that happens because you can change your images on a lot of websites after they're up, but your, basically your system has already um, scanned it for the name and it already has the screenshot 345 saved as its name. So anything you change your name to, it's not really changing it in the coding. So you want to make sure it already has the right name first and then upload it to your website. So silly little things like that can make a huge difference. Optimizing the size of images right now is a big one. Uh, some people will put videos on their website, which is a terrible, terrible idea. It, it allows videos to be watched faster, but it takes up a lot more bandwidth on your website. So you want to save your videos somewhere else and not usually YouTube because YouTube obviously wants people to stay around YouTube. So they'll uh, present higher ranking videos after yours. It's like, oh, I wanna watch a video like this. Hey, Tom Cruise has this thing going on. It's like, yeah, I don't want him getting my traffic. I want me to get my traffic. So ideally you want somewhere like uh, Twilio or something, oh, not Twilio, um, all of a sudden names escape me. Somewhere where you can save your video and store it and embed the, the links. Um, those ones tend to work the best. So there's all this kind of stuff goes into what they call SEO ranking so that your page gets ranked higher according to certain search words. And all of these things take play in it, not just having those words on the page or anything like that. 
Um, there are, then there's this thing called UXO, which is Google's new thing is they, they want your user experience optimized or user experience design. You'll see that a lot is UX design. And basically what that means is that you've designed your page in such a way that your viewers stick around on your page and watch. So clearly things like videos tend to keep their attention longer. Things like quizzes, uh, opt-ins, uh, allow them to stay longer. Anything that allows them to stay longer on your page and, and interact with your content is something that will help you to rank higher. Even I think the little chat bots on the pages, if that keeps your clientele on your page longer, that'll give you a higher ranking in the UXO experience as well. So SEO isn't kind of what it used to be 10 years ago. It has changed because of Google's intention on having you have a better experience on the pages that they show you, which is also why some of you may have noticed in the last few years that Google searches aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> when you look for something, you can find something. Now you yes. look for something and you find everything else but what you're looking for, but yes. they have really <laughs> high ranking. <laughs> so it's like, yay, great. Um, so you really want to make sure that when you say your page is about something that's actually about that, um, that's the biggest one is if I'm going to put a, a a page up on mascara, that whole page should be about mascara, not makeup in general, not sweatshirts, not anything else. It's just about that thing. Um, your homepage obviously can be varied, but your that's when it comes to your heading. And then what is that paragraph about the next heading? And what is that paragraph about? Okay. So you want to be very intentional about the content that you're putting on your pages. And when it comes to SEO, it's not just about monitoring your the words that you're putting out, you want to build pages that make you an expert in your thing. So if you're an expert in bandanas, this is, you want it. Why are you an expert in bandanas? Why camouflage? Why, you know, neon colors? Why whatever? And have pages about those certain things in particular so that people that can search on that can find a ton of content on it. That's good. good. So, Quick question now, yeah, bring it, right? You got a whole lot. Bring it back to <clears throat> when you're using, say, you're using social media as far as your marketing because yep. you may not be able to afford to do a website or get you don't have the proper people to go to for a website. Yep. So you're using TikTok, you may be using Facebook or um, Instagram to market. Yep. But say the bad part is you may not have just one thing that you're selling or one thing that you're doing, mm -hmm. what's the best thing for you to, on your page, how should you navigate that per se? Great question. So it, it, and it presents a few problems because one is as a business owner, you want to own your content. And when you put your content on Facebook and TikTok and places, any free platform, you no longer own that content. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is, is that now Facebook can shut you down. You can't access any of your stuff and it's gone and say la vie, sorry, not our problem. And that is clearly an issue. <laughs> That's okay. become a very big issue with a lot of people that have had very big accounts. So one thing that you can do to save you is, uh, is to have a few accounts and no Facebook and Instagram don't count as few accounts because they're both owned by Meta. So having a TikTok account and a Facebook account, you can put the same content on both of them, which is great. And you want to make sure that you have a couple of things kind of holding you. The second thing is you want to get out of selling your stuff on those platforms as soon as possible, because as soon as somebody buys something from you, that company gets your client's information um, and yeah. you want to own your client's information because if you, if you're not bringing them back into your own database and your own CRM, even if it's your cell phone and going, Hey, I know Dave's number. I can call Dave and go, Hey Dave, are you interested in buying something else? That as a business owner is my, is my goodwill. So okay. anybody that has come to my business before, I have a right to have their name and email address or phone number or mailing address, whatever they're willing to give me. And that becomes the goodwill of my business. If I have enough customers, that becomes a sellable asset or an asset in my business is to say, hey, I've had, you know, 15 customers a month for the last two years. 
and somebody can actually figure out what that's worth and then assess that I could actually sell that business. Okay. So that in itself is an important concept to understand in business, because if you don't understand that having, you know, a hundred thousand followers on Instagram doesn't mean anything if, if I don't own any of their content and if they're not buying from me. So the first thing I want to do is figure out how do I get them to buy something from me, obviously to make more money, to <laughs> be doing more. And then how do I get that information in so, my hands? Okay. Yeah? Yep. So my question is, say you're up there, you're selling up there. Well, not to say that you're charging them on there, but they're hitting you up. Well, okay, well, I want to buy this product. Da, da, da. Is it best for you to go, okay, well, can you email me or you can text me at this number so that I can, we can make it where you could buy the product or we can meet up or whatever the case is. You go that route instead of selling it directly through the sites. Uh, yeah, it can be. And it totally depends on whether or not they're, <laughs> they're willing to do that for starters yes, and true. or if it makes sense for the product. So, for example, if, you, if you're selling a digital product, doesn't make sense that you have okay. to have their address, right? Like we're not going to meet somewhere to sell them a digital okay. asset. Um, and does it make sense if they're going to like you could say. Um, so I'll give you a, a pertinent example for this. Amazon will not allow you to get the buyer's information. When you buy from Amazon, Amazon owns their information. They own their content. And you can put a little thing in the box saying, hey, if you love this product, tell your friends if something's wrong with it, absolutely please connect with us first. Here's the email or here's a website and this is how you get a hold of us. That is one way to be non-intrusive towards Amazon and still kind of get people back into your website. Okay. Um, and most people don't mind doing it. Like you, you can buy something from Amazon. You don't mind seeing that. What they do mind seeing is if you put a postcard in there saying, Hey, you know, you're, uh, come by from us instead. Amazon frowns upon that and you can get, uh, you can lose your prime status for sending things like that in your products. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you could do is say, Hey, we have a, uh, loyalty program. And if you buy six of these, uh, we'll send you a discount, register your purchases on our website and, uh, you know, buy your six and we'll send you your seven free, whatever I just said. Um, okay. Those kind of incentives can get people back to your website. Um, and the same concept applies to Facebook and anywhere else that you can actually sell your products on. But mm -hmm. most people aren't savvy of that on Facebook. Um, when it comes to Amazon, everybody kind of knows it because Amazon goes, no, you can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook doesn't go, no, you can't do this. They just shut you down or nobody sees you again and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a little more secretive of it, whereas Amazon is very point blank. These are our rules. This is how you're going to play the game and don't play the game otherwise because you just won't sell with us. Um, <laughs> well, and you, and you got to understand too that these are big businesses doing yeah. business and and why they're doing business because we look at it and go hey there's an opportunity here awesome i'm going to take advantage of that opportunity but with uh, opportunity comes some responsibility and it's up to us to know what their responsibility is and what our responsibility is as business owner in order to make us more effective yes. so if we can get and entice people to come to our websites and buy off the website, that works better. Um, mm -hmm. But again, you gotta, you gotta sell enough and make enough money to eventually get to the point where you can afford the website to afford the shopping cart, to afford the, the things that come along with that digital marketing. And sometimes it is as easy enough as just like, Hey, if you're interested in this thing, email me or here's my PayPal account. PayPal account That's is a great one to start with it sucks as a long-term business plan because oh, business. in the contract, PayPal says, if there's a, um, a callback, we can take the money out of your account. So they can go into <laughs> your bank account and take the money out of the account. If there's not enough in your PayPal account, just so yeah. you know that that is part of the contract. Now I think I'm the only plan person on the planet that's ever, um, said I'm not signing the contract because of that clause. But, um, <laughs> cause if you want to do business with PayPal, you got to sign the contract. So now, the way it goes down. that was my next question to know if you have that information where it's like, you know, they got Zelle, they got Cash App, they got all these different uh, ways people can pay you. Yep. But which ones is the best ones for you to go with? 
it totally depends on where you're at and what you got going on in business because mm. things like Square and uh, Stripe yes. are easy access to get into, but depending on your business are kind of hell on wheels when it comes to paying off. So they're easy to set up, but if your business is something like you're a speaker and you're doing events and at that event, you're going to then sell your, sure, your so high so ticket cool. item. So once a month or once a quarter or worse, once a year, you have an event that you make $40,000 at. They're looking at that like, what the, something's not right in Texas. And they can shut down your account uh, immediately because what happens is they are responsible for the chargebacks, for the liabilities, right? So if, if what you're doing is not legit, um, they want to know that, but the majority of people, it is legit. You go and you do your three day event and you're talking about business and you're selling your business coaching program at the end of it. And you know, a bunch of people buy it and you got a ton of money. All of a sudden you got a good influx of money, which is awesome, but that's not how square and stripe are set up in mm. order to not get shut down. If your business runs like that, you really want to have a merchant account and you want them to know who you are and why your business runs that way and who you're selling it to, who's showing up at these events um, and we recommend companies like we pay and there's a few others where people are actually there with you. They understand your business and, and they can even help at your events to, to upsell some of them. So it, it really, really depends on what kind of business you want. Most merchant companies want you to have consistent sales all the time. So if you can have, you know, one sale a week or one sale a day or, three sales a day, which would be even better. That's what they're looking for is that consistency. As soon as you have a business model that doesn't have consistency, then you really got to look at um, getting merchant accounts, things like that. Somebody that's not going to close your account, that's not going to freeze your bank assets. <laughs> so, and those are real issues that real people mm -hmm. have that just don't know. They're like, oh, I didn't know they could do that. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, it's in the 200 page contract that you signed without reading. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all do it right awesome like, did you read this contract <laughs> oh hell no i didn't no no i didn't oh i absolutely did yeah here's my signature and that's and that's it and i'm glad you brought that up too so that's just like uh when when we go on social media like facebook TikTok thing and uh you know we it's like a what is it like a two-hour page or something to read and we don't read the the you know the fine print we just be like i'm just gonna accept because it's just it's, it's just too time consuming to read and print. And I'm, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm glad you said that. It, we didn't even know that. Oh yeah. And we, we tease each other now that the biggest lie in history right now is I have read the contract. <laughs> it's like, no, you haven't. <laughs> Nobody's read the terms and conditions. So True. Sure <laughs> that's, good. Huh. That's, that's good. This is good. So, right. so, so, so since we're talking about paperwork, let, let's let's talk about uh ndas is that is that important ndas <laughs> yeah, <she's> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay what, 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 uh, why yeah. is NDA, why cool. okay so uh non-disclosure agreements are extremely <clears throat> important especially when you have an idea that is different in the industry so if you're creating bandanas it's not an issue if you're whitelist or white labeling somebody else's products not an issue that's like that's public knowledge and and you're out there when it comes to an idea so you've you've made a tool that's not out there you've created some sort of you know chemical something something that's not out there to have an nda on those is is paramount because one people will take them faster than you can blink um i'd like to say it's otherwise but it's not there are a million and one jerks on the planet and you will guarantee find we seven of them right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it pains me. It sucks, but NDAs are out there to protect your butt. Um, and before you, the, the weird part is you almost have to get your lawyer to sign an NDA in order to get him to write the NDA that you need to get other people to sign. I say him, I mean, everybody. Um, yeah, there are, so legally in North America, when somebody signs an NDA, you are you are liable on that. So um, if that gets out, 
and we know it got out because somebody else has my idea and I can see it and you're the only person I told. And it's like, dude, <laughs> like, let's do the paper trail and we know where this is going. Um, that That is a, a high cost of a high price for doing business. The problem is that the legal system is only nationwide. So what you do in the U.S. is not pertinent pretty much anywhere else in the world. Now, most countries have um kind of agreements with each other so certainly uh any of the commonwealth com countries have agreements with each other common the g8 has certain agreements with each other anybody outside of those gets a hold of it and you can kiss your invention goodbye so mm -hmm. as soon as you take that idea to Let's go with the obvious. You're going to take it to China and get it built because they can make it a lot cheaper. You have to understand that they are going to build it a lot faster, cheaper than you can even get it to market. They're going to have it made before you've even in decided which merchant company you're going to work with. So knowing that, you have to know that you have something of value that's going to make a difference in the American market. So that tool has to be made out of something that's more durable, that's more something so that people can see the difference between the ripoff and yours. Um, it, it is a real problem. And uh, yeah, depending on what you have and what you're taking to market, that's probably your first bet. Let's go. Okay. So for the ones that are starting off, do um, how, how can they get an NDA? Do they just write an NDA or something? It can be like a simple, just a, you know, just Yeah, write I'm it sure you just Google it and Google NDA. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, they're not going to be as legally binding in some circumstances as one written by a lawyer. So the reason that people would go to a lawyer to get an NDA written is because you have something that you're going to tell somebody else who is going to be put in a position to um, to take action on it. So, and that's where you want to cover your butt because you want to understand that we do not have a justice department. We have a legal department. Understand that right now. This is not a justice system. This is a legal system. So it's not according to, yeah, but I was right. And this is mine. And my intention was your intention is irrelevant in the court of law. It's what is the law around it and what does that document say? And is that legal and bi binding in this state to that state, this city to that city? Uh, like there's so much crap going on and is it pertinent in this industry? So for example, if you have a movie idea or you have a book idea, right? Your that, that copyright and those concepts are going to be under different law than if you come up with a brand new type of screwdriver and, and that's super important to understand. I mean, if you have more time than money, you can Google a lot and find out from a lot more educated people than me in that area. And I would highly recommend that you do that. Um, in fact, if you need one of the best kind of uh, lawyer for solopreneurs that I know is Heather Pierce Campbell out of Seattle. Her, She is a huge advocate for online businesses and small businesses. Um, mm -hmm. She is the most affordable and smart and open and honest lawyer in that realm that I've ever come across. I would recommend her up, down, sideways. Uh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's yeah, Let's go. All right. So for colors for, for entrepreneurs brand, is yep. that important? Yep. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Psychology of purchasing. <laughs> Absolutely it is. So let me ask you this. If you were to go and buy a shirt, any shirt, is the color of the shirt important to you? Yes. Yes. Why? Um, because oh, go, go ahead. ahead. And you both have different answers. I'm, I'm well, me is yes, because I it all depends on the color I want. If I want to go dark or light, that's just what it is. Well, it's for me. It's it's the uh, the appeal of it. So it's like you know, if it's black, red, blue, like that. That's what appeals to me for you know for colors. Right? Have you ever noticed when somebody's coming across the street and one person's got a bright orange shirt, you automatically make different assumptions about them than somebody walking up the street that's wearing gray and green camouflage? 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. And somebody that was wearing pink and purple, you're going to have a completely, totally different assumption about them and about <laughs> everything. <laughs> uh, just looking at them walking down in a t-shirt. I mean, they may have just grabbed their t They may have, their girlfriend might have grabbed the t-shirt, made them wear it outside. You have no idea what the circumstances are, why they're wearing that shirt, but you have a certain set of um, biases and decisions that you've made judgments that you've made in your head about what's going on with that person just based on the thing that they're wearing right the exact same thing happens to your business the people who are looking at your business are going to make those assumptions there's a very good reason why um, banks tend to have blue logos there's a very good reason why sporting shops tend to have orange logos there's a very good reason why certain businesses tend to have certain colored logos and it's because they want you to have a certain feel about them before you go into the whole purchasing decision with them. Gotcha. So when you say certain fields, like let's say if my logo is the color of green, so mm -hmm. that certain field means growth, honesty. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah. So the way you can see this is you can search it green logos on Google and you will find a certain genre. They will tend to be in certain industries um, and they'll probably be in finance and health, <laughs> food. Um, <laughs> and you can go into, if you have the, um, <laughs> if you go into, this is kind of a little old school way of doing it, but if you go into a ch chapters or something like that in Barnes Noble and you go into the finance section, you'll notice a lot of them tend to have green spines. Mm. Uh, so you can go into your industry and go and look, walk into, if you're thinking about starting up a business, go into anyone, you're thinking of starting up a gym, go into the fitness section, look at their logos. You'll find a lot of black and yellow and <laughs> whatever stand out because that tends to be, you know, the black is the, um, is a strong, independent, rebellious sort of feeling and the yellow stands out. It, it's it's making a sharp impact on things. It's a, an action kind of color. And the combination of the two tend to make for a really strong uh, image with gyms and fitness equipment and things like that. Gotcha. So let, so for the business establishments, right? So yep. McDonald's, Starbucks. Yellow and okay, red, Star Starbucks green. Mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah. and... Uh, those colors have a, a meaning to a warmth of what you just said. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I'm going to just throw, throw, throw a, a, a stash out there. Okay. Um, Home Depot, orange, mm -hmm. which is... Get it done. It's fun. <laughs> it's get it done kind of energy. Mm. Gotcha. So that, okay. So now that we got the colors, so that means the words... And the font, is that important for your brand and business? Absolutely it is. Because it, understand that everything that we see has a certain image to it. So when you see block font, it's very masculine. It's very tough. It's very right out there. I will absolutely get to purple. Um, so bold. When you have serifs, so you have like the little curly cues on the end of the things, it tends to soften the the feeling of it it also tends to make them harder to read because you get into calligraphy and something like that you think handwriting's hard to read right? <laughs> like, True. Right? And, and you have to take into account um a lot of things about your your purchasers in in that realm because you may love the swirly kind of the handwritten ones and it looks really pretty but if your audience can't read it Right. If they tend to be over 75, they're not going to be able to read it. If they ha if they've been born since what is it, 2000 or something, and they have no clue how to read it, that's going to be another issue. So you want to be able to take into account what your audience is. Purple tends to be the color of royalty and um, and higher energies. So it tends to be a lot of uh, crystal healers, things like that. Women in business, teaching women how to do business is going to be they're going to pick purple as their logos. It's going to be a very soft business. It's going to be a very, um, when you go in, you are expecting to be very calm, very relaxed, 
like this is not a daycare <laughs> unless it's purple, pink, and orange, in which case then it's going to be a daycare. Um, like you really want to, you're going to have a certain feeling. And the more you can get congruent with that, it's not just how you want your clients to feel, it's how do they feel. So if you want to open up a spa and the logos are purple, I'm going to expect it to be a little more sensual, a little more smelly, a little more like the essential oils, things like that going on in there than a spa that has gold and black as their logo. I expect them to have more marble tile. I'm going to expect them to have white house coats and I'm going to expect less um, sensationalism when I walk in, if that makes sense. I expect okay. it to be a little more minimalist. Gotcha. Okay. So on this, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is boss. Wow. Yeah. So Ju <laughs> Jupiter sugar, baby. I want to know what you do. What do you do, honey? Let's, let's make it real. Give her some real oh. advice. Hey, yes. So I was looking at this. Please share this with three to five people. They need to hear this that, information. That's my whole... Dude, if I knew <laughs> this information when I started my first business, oh my God, I'd be like, yes. That's it. Because I'm I'm in the process of creating a logo, logo right? Nice. And I'm trying to... As you're talking about the colors, I'm like, okay, now... I didn't so let's know back this. up the bus. Figure it out in my head, head now. Huh? Right? What's a product? What are you doing? Um, I do hair and video, like photography and video. So it's like I'm trying to. So you do hair video? for video and video, or hair for everyday life and. Um, I just do hair, and then I add like I can do. I can take pictures of the people I do their hair with. Oh, like the ones I. If I were with. you, I would mix the two, so that you're not That's... separating your your marketing. Yeah, you can do both. But you're not separating marketing. So if you said, I will make you video ready by doing your hair, it's not just you're getting a, a $10 haircut because it's Tuesday. It's you're <laughs> getting a haircut because you're going to be video ready. Like yes. You are going to get noticed. So you can do this for date night. You can do this for your wedding. You can do this for whatever you want. But we're going to make you video ready. And by the way, I know that because I have X years of experience doing videos. And I do videos for blah, 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 whatever you do videos for. Mm -hmm. So make it one business. And then that way you have one set of marketing and people aren't confused about what you do and how you do it. That makes sense? That and makes that sense. Way, that was, uh, I was trying to figure out how to write. <laughs> and then that way it answers your question earlier about how do I do my marketing for my social media for the yeah. two businesses, combine them into one. And then you have one message and everybody gets that message. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you can talk about Hey, this is how you act in front of a video. This is how you do your makeup in front of a video. This is how you do anything in front of this is why you want to be standing, not sitting, blah, 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 blah. And they know that coming from a hairdresser as opposed to going, like, what the hell are you talking about? You're a hairdresser. Yeah. Right now, you can say whatever the hell you want. And it's because I'm a video hairdresser that I know this. Got you. Now, for your uh, logo, Metaphysical practitioner and do spiritual products, candles, oils, and recently changed my logo from pink to purple. Good move. Um, and because the purple is much more spiritual in mm. nature, pink is much more, can I say, sexual in nature? Um, so pink would be great. You don't have to for, yourself. You're good. For good for, pink's great for um, women in business, for women in, in gyms, women kind of going out there and doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the spirituality tends to be the idea of not doing something, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. It's about being, not about doing. And bringing it down into the candles and the oils, you want to have a spiritual experience with those, not a doing. Because I can burn candles like none other, and I'm going to sell that candle for 10 bucks. Whereas if I have a spiritual experience with that candle, I can make that last forever. And I can charge, in some cases, there is a ridiculous... Ex there is somebody selling candles and uh, I don't want to give away too much of her business um, thing, but it's an opportunity is um, it's about the, the cosmic need that somebody has and about the kind of the, the spiritual trauma they have, not just the, this life trauma they have for like $200. So depending on the oil that you put into the candle and the story and the experience that you're telling with that candle, you can increase the value of that candle substantially. Mm. So, substantially. So good move on the pink to purple. Now, back to Zay. Um, hairdressing. 
Now, because it's video hairdressing, you want it to have a certain, you want to up it a little bit. Okay. So I would tend to go with things like black and gold, black and silver, something that has more of the, um, what do you call it? Kind of a savvy look, if you want to put it that mm -hmm. way. What were you thinking for your colors? I haven't gotten that far yet. I, I was coming up with something while we was talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just do it. Huh? But let's just come up with it while we're here. Why not? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was, the whole thing was, I was just trying to come up with the logo itself. And then I was like, okay, I'll work up with the colors. I came up with something, but I didn't really come up with colors. Well, I didn't think colors really mattered that much. Mm -hmm. Now I know it does. They do. <laughs> but I didn't think it mattered that much. I would figure you just pick whatever colors you think look nice and you just put it up there and let's see what happens, you know? Well, and, and for, and for hair design, you probably could kind of pick anything because anything kind of matches that. But I'm going to guess that you're doing hair for a certain reason. It's not just anybody's hair, right? Like, are you doing kids hair, guys hair, women's hair? I can do everybody. That's the thing. Who do you so love to me, do? Huh? Who do you love to do? Who Whose hair do you love to work on? See, that's the thing. Cause of what I do, because yep. I braid and lock and all of this stuff, and I'm actually learning to cut. It's just more so it's a mixture of with that. Okay. Um, I'm able to do all. So Okay. So that that will kill you in digital marketing. Mm. It's, it's great in, like if you had a storefront and you said family haircuts, right? And you just wanted to be kind of value haircuts. You, you could totally do that. Yes. I would highly recommend that you pick one mm -hmm. that you love to work with and that you create a story around it. Mm -hmm. So video ready cameras, um, camera ready. One, it narrows you down to somebody's going to spend more money getting video ready than they are on a Tuesday. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be a little easier to market to them because all of your clients are going to look freaking awesome. I don't want to look freaking awesome on a Tuesday. I want to look good. I want to look freaking awesome in front of a camera, mm -hmm. right? And I will, me, will pay like 200 bucks to get my hair done once a year to do a video shoot, whereas I'm not going to pay that every week to do it. Somebody is. Somebody is. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it may not be your audience. And it may be your audience. Um, and yeah. I'm not saying you have to only take $200 clients, but when you do take $200 clients, it makes your $10 clients go, mm, I should probably do that. Yes. <laughs> right. And they're going to, they're going to up their game because they don't want to walk out look with a $10 haircut anymore. They want to walk out with $50 haircut at least or whatever. Does that make sense? Um, yes. So if you can, I get it that you can do all and you probably will do all, but don't advertise yourself that way anymore. Okay. Does that makes sense. So if a guy yeah. comes up to you and goes, "Oh, you're doing my girlfriend's hair on Friday. Can you do me too?" Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come on in, and you know, it's fine too. That's totally sounded sexual. But yeah, I didn't mean to. But, but you're gonna advertise. <laughs> Depends how hot his girl, her girlfriend, or her boyfriend is, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's like, but you you want to? You're not gonna turn them down for doing business with them, but you don't want your marketing to be that way, right? Nothing. Your marketing has to serve a specific purpose to it. And it has to solve the problem. The more specialized you can get, the more expensive that becomes, right? I'm going to spend way more money on a heart surgeon than I am on my GP. That's true. Right? And, and same for every industry. Doesn't matter yeah. what industry it is. There's, you know, you're the ones in the corner. And then there's the ones that you spend 10 grand on. You don't want to be the one on the corner. You want to be the one that people are going to you specifically to, to pay more for. Yes. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so in that, if you decide to go with the whole video thing, I would take it up a notch in um, kind of the savviness of your of how you want to do that. And you may look at each one of the colors and go, each one has a meaning, right? Mm -hmm. Every color has a generalized meaning. When we look at it, even when we're little kids, right, you look at yellow and it's sunshine, right? Nobody paints the sun black. Right. <laughs> right. Um they may paint the dog purple, but they're not going to paint the sun black. Um, things like to do. So let's just go through them because we're here. Um, so red is passion, usually, um, usually sexual energy, very much high um, passion. So 
typically um, blood sports, typically high um, business um, coaching, things like that. Um, anything that's high passion, um, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants that focus on Valentine's Day, love, um, things like that are going to have red in their um, logos. Next one down is orange. Orange is definitely a happy, feel good color, getting stuff done, action oriented, kids playing in the field kind of energy. Yellow is sunshine, happiness, um, feel good again. Green is your connectivity. It's your, um, like you were saying earlier, your honesty, your truthfulness, your think growth, growing grass, trees, right? Anything that has that kind of symbolism like finances and actual food are going to be in there. Blue tends to be community, tends to be a cumulative. Um, it's communicative. So phone companies, um, anywhere where you're having communication amongst a group of people will tend to be blue. Um, purple is the, like we said, the spiritual aspects of things. It's very sensual in nature. And black is very strong and it's also very rebellious. So black has kind of three different <laughs> sides to it. So it can be the rebellious side, it can be a very powerful side, and it can be a destructive side, which if you own a construction company could be a fantastic or a deconstruction company, like somebody that demolition, right? Another good one, black color for that one. Um, and what I miss, grays are very, uh, let's call it sophisticated, very, you could call it boring. <laughs> if you have a very boring business, you want things to be very flannel. Um, but it also has a note of sophistication to it. So a tea company could be gray um, because you want to have that note of sophistication. Uh, cigar companies could be gray. Um, beige tends to be like gray, except for a little more friendly, if you want to put it that way. So it's a little warmer feeling than gray. And pink, as I mentioned earlier, is um, a very action-oriented sexual color. So there's red, which is passion and sexual, but then there's pink, which is a little more kind of happy and energetic. So depending on what you want to convey in those. So that's kind of your basic layout. on gold and silver, and gold and silver, what <laughs> you would expect them to be. Gold is expensive and fancy schmancy, and silver is touch class. Mm. So kind of be used on advertisements too. For example, if I want to advertise that and candles for Valentine's Day, should I have a red theme? Um, stick to your stick to your business colors. Um, but certainly for Valentine's Day, yes, absolutely you want to have red in your yes. Uh, that's just a yes. Okay. So call okay, so Kind of hilarious that you can say Yanni, but you can't say the other one. It's just me. No matter you what, to, part, you don't have to. I don't have to say for myself. Awesome. Okay, so anytime you're showing that, yes, absolutely. If you're showing it to guys, you want them to be red, and if you're showing them to girls, you want them to be pink, because pinks girls won't be offended by pinks, whereas guys will be turned on by reds. And you can do it very subliminally as well. I wonder if I have anything in my background. I got a hand back there. Um, so, for, so, so for the ones that are just listening to the audio, <laughs> she showed her background. Um, I'm trying to find something in my background that might have some subliminals. I, I do have a, um, the only one I saw that might even come close is, so there's a, a bookend, but it's a hand. But if you, if you were to color it, certain colors, it could subliminally look um otherwise um uh, and subliminals have a huge impact on video huge like do not underestimate that people go oh you won't see it i pointed out something in a painting that my sister bought and she was like i can never see that painting the same way again like you've totally ruined it for me and i'm like i'm sorry that your house has a giant penis on the side of it but you know you bought a painting with a giant penis right in the middle of it with a bush at the bottom of the fireplace i'm like mm. It's not that subtle, actually. Same. 
And then she has it in her living room. And it's like, and you wonder why people have certain conversations in your living room. And it was all <laughs> subconsciously. It was all totally subconsciously. But she's, she would, people would come oh, and, walk, and walk in the door. Like, come on in. Like, hey, we're having a conversation. And then they'd go sideways. And she's like, what? Like, what is that? <laughs> one, inviting people into your house. And two, it's because you have a giant penis sticking on your wall. That's why. Oh, man. Yeah, that would be hurt. I'll be like, now I got to take this down. I can't have You no never more. thought your podcast would go. I can't. Oh, man. I can't. <laughs> I, can't. <laughs> I, can't. <laughs> I can't. Um, okay. I Our can't. Thing is more people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see some work. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't want those subliminal messages in your marketing, make sure that you don't have them because I can't tell you how many times I've seen them and going, um, did you plan that? And they're like, plan what? I like, yeah, no, that's gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can entail oh, those but you can't accidental on those things. <laughs> oh, okay. So how can someone, I, I forgot to ask this question. How can someone find their niche, their hobby and turn it into oh, yeah, business of right. what they love to do? Awesome question. And, and it's a tough one to answer because my sons refuse to take their hobbies and turn them into careers because they have fun doing them and they don't want to ruin them. <laughs> I'm like, I, I get that. I, I totally get that. And then, well, one of my other sons is by necessity. So he was, he went in to be an electrician and then he went in and got his plumbing and he got his um, certifications in both. And now he's roughing um, because he roughed as a kid and he had a ton of fun doing it. And so he's doing it. So uh, there, there's this element of patience and, and, and permission. So give yourself permission to, to not know what you want to do. I, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up and I hope I never do. Um, and like I said earlier, I've had a 28 <laughs> pivots in my career because I'm trying to find the thing that I like to do. And what I have noticed though, is that in everything I do, I try to do the best that I can in it and get the most out of it that I possibly can. When I was a dental assistant, I discovered point blank. I did not want to be a dental assistant. I did love the idea of being a dentist. I did not love the idea of going seven years in university um, so I f tried to find a way around that. And that was a fun story too. It didn't quite work out the way I planned. But I also found out that there's this thing called maxillofacial surgery, uh, which I was also super fascinated with, that if I had had the right kind of mentoring in, I probably would have gone into it. Because there was a whole science behind when you have to reconstruct somebody's jaws, what their face ends up looking like. And depending on their race and the region and all sorts of fun things depends on what they like to see in their facial features and how you build that out. And up until that point, when I was looking at this, that wasn't a thing. They just kind of reconstructed it so that it was strong and, and, you know, was bound to last, which is also kind of important. Um, but when we can start to get the nuances in started to help people feel better looking, because of the surgery that they had had. So they had to have the surgery because of whatever reason, but how do you make them feel better about it in the end? Um, that was an area that I was fascinated with. Clearly I didn't go into it. Um, so I just say, uh, be nice to yourself. And where, where do you look for mentors? All over the place. So put it out there that you're looking for somebody that has some know-how and some experience. And if somebody knows somebody that you could maybe ask them some questions. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I was younger was thinking that people that had it all together were just stuck on doing their own thing. And it's totally not true. Somebody that's mastered their thing, they really just want to share it with other people and help other people get really good at what they've learned. And you may take a little bit of what I know about business and put more of your energy into, say, the, the hair design and hair cutting and find a mentor in hair as opposed to in business. And that's totally cool too. But understanding that um, the people that have it all together, that have very successful shops, they're not going to hoard their information. They actually want you to get good at what you do because they're passionate about the thing and, and they want people to get good at it. It's more often the people that are just starting that won't share what they're doing because they don't know what they're good at yet. 
they're, they're still trying to find their thing and they don't want anybody to take their ideas. Once somebody is very well established, they're like, take my idea, run with it, go. <laughs> Fly, be free, have fun. So yeah, Google search and don't be afraid to uh, connect with them. If you find somebody online that you're totally jazzed by and you're like, oh my God, I love everything you do. Um, have some prepared questions for them and just say, hey, would you mind answering a few questions? I'd love to do, you know, how do you find your niche? What's your, you know, how do you find people that are more important? And you're going to ask them kind of blase questions at first. Um, but don't be afraid to ask them the question you really want to ask them. I don't know what that is, but more often than not, I have found that somebody goes, oh, yeah, but I had this question I really wanted to ask them, and I didn't. It's like, ask them. <laughs> ask them the question, right? And even if they give you 10 minutes of your time and then they don't go beyond that, that's okay because you've you've used that 10 minutes to the best of your ability. And if you can find somebody that's willing to kind of take you under their wing that's awesome and amazing, but you don't need that. It, it's awesome and amazing, but you don't need that. And you can probably find people on YouTube right now that are willing to share their information for free <laughs> to everybody. So um, that's probably the easiest way to find a mentor now. And that wasn't there when I was growing up. Yeah, that's it's, it's so much easier now, so especially much. with technology. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're information so, is not what we're missing community is what we're missing and podcasts like this give you the community that you're looking for exactly oh yes yes absolutely and, so, and community why is that so important though as a as a human being we have this thing maslow's hierarchy of needs and one is our you know survival we need a house we need shelter we need food and drink we need going up a notch and we need to feel um, part of a <laughs> Mm -hmm. absolutely why not right all you're going to do is you're going to get her uh, sorry i'm going back to the question that just popped up was what about sade sade how do you say it okay Shade. um she will probably have publicists she will probably have people that are her gatekeepers and all that kind of fun stuff but absolutely write an e email and send it in and asking questions and saying, Hey, would you mind? And you would be shocked and amazed. She may actually answer you back personally because she may tell them, Hey, if anybody has a really good question, let me know. I want to answer those personally. Um, you don't know until you try it. Right. I've people have done the most bizarre things that I have ever seen in, in the business world. And they've got the answers that they're looking for. So if you can get answers from billionaires that just reach out and go, oh, my God, that was a really good question. I really like that. Absolutely. And they personally answer you back. They're certainly willing to do it in, a, in an industry where their audience are saying, hey, we love you. We want more from you. Like that's the reason somebody goes into entertainment is because they want the attention and they want to be able to um, place some love on their fans. So absolutely, I would totally do that. Let's go. All right. We're 35 yeah. minutes in, y'all. Okay, yeah. so what was the last question? <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're halfway are. through answering that one and I forgot about that one. Sorry. We are 35 okay. minutes in. in. Um, all right. So if if anybody that is looking at this right now, any questions for Michelle, just throw it, you know, just at her Zay. Any questions? Nope. Okay. He answered so... my questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting back to yours. Have you thought about your logo yet? Have I thought of a logo? Yeah, yeah, like any concepts of what you want to have in it, any elements that you want it to um, be? Um I've thought a couple of things. I was using I was gonna use like some of the letters um and engage it with an I because of the name I had came up with for the business kind of thing. What was the name? But, huh? What was the name? Oh, Zay's vision. Zay's vision ties into the the hair and the video thing too, right? That's that's my idea. Yeah, that's what I'm I love it. Do. And and when you think of your name or yourself, does any symbol tend to come to mind, whether it's a pair of scissors or otherwise? Um, not really. For me, it was just more so because at first I was gonna come up. I was thinking about a camera and then putting some some hair supplies and stuff. And I was like, that's a lot, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So because what kinda... you could do is go Zay's vision and then the 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 long part of the Y could be mm -hmm. curly hair, like an extension curl going down. That's different. Somehow to... Yeah. And 
and then vision the o could be like a like a video o like a, like uh, a the, the square lens the lens of yep. it yeah um so you could tie those in so that just the logo when you see it you go oh it's hair and video mm -hmm. i get it right and mm -hmm. that's what you want in a good video or in a good um logo is you want to get it right away and people look at mcdonald's and go yeah but that doesn't really say hamburger they look at you know nike and go that doesn't really say speed but when you when you look at the golden arches they are undeniably <laughs> the golden arches when they're up in the sky right and that's what you want in the logo uh nike's does have an element of speed in it it has um right that the swoosh is kind of wing, it looks like a wing and the definition of speed and movement and that's what you want in it so when they can look at day's vision and see that it's kind of the hair in the video and when you have the tagline we get you video ready mm. then people know and they're like oh okay totally get it and because it's the girls extension we know that you work on girls and guys will go hey can you get me video ready too and they'll go yes. exactly and i see it as a black logo with potentially like a silver under shadow yeah so that you got kind of those the um like a silver kind of lining to it um, and that kind of feeds into your story, too, is that you can have the silver lining in your video, the silver lining in your event, the silver lining in anything. And yes. we want to capture that for you. Sounds good. I like that idea. I had, I had something completely different. <laughs> well, and you can go with yours, too. I mean, that you know, sounds good. I like that, though. I, just I was trying to figure out creation. how to make it go together. That was my thing. Because yeah. what nice. I came up with, it didn't show both. It more so showed just a vision, just like, cause I just had, a, I had the letters in the eye basically. And it's like, yeah. oh, well, this is what we're doing. But they wouldn't have got what you basically, what you're saying, they wouldn't have got that from that. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Nice. Well, and, and you may come up with something else and, and that's totally cool. Yes. So yeah, when I started my first business, I started at 23 with not one, but three businesses. Cause you know, go big or stay home. It was a really dumb idea. I shouldn't have done that, but so don't do that. <laughs> but I was, uh, my, my spouse at the time got me a an electronic store. we developed a bed and breakfast and I brought in a tanning salon because we were in the Northwest territories way up North, um, by Santa Claus. And, uh, yeah, I learned a lot about marketing. My first meeting with the, the business development bank was okay. How, what do you think you're going to make in revenue? And I'm like, I don't know. How would I know that? And they're like, well, because you bought a business, you should probably have some expectation of how much you can make. And I'm like, not a clue. Uh, <laughs> they're like, um, did you have any numbers from the guys that did it before then? And I'm like, I have not seen anything. I just know that we decided to build the building and there was stuff in there. Or we bought the building and there was stuff in there. And we decided, hey, let's go with this. And so I knew nothing about business. Like nothing. Zero. Mm. Not a, um I was fortunately not responsible for the debt load that came with it. Um, but needless to say, a little positive story. My ex and I actually get along just fine. <laughs> despite that little harrowing business experience, but it was harrowing. Um, my intention at that time, though, was to be able to bring a service to people that I thought they could use. And and I, I, it was in my realm of knowing. And the reason that we started a tanning salon was because we were up in the Northwest Territories and that's in the middle of winter, everybody goes south, but they go south and we burn the first day we're out in the sunlight. It's like, and it's like, well, we should probably yeah. kind of warm up to that whole experience and have a, you know, go tanning a couple of times, at least a week before you go down south and, and sizzle. Yeah. Um, and the phone was ringing off the hooks, but they were asking about tanning their hides, not their wives. And if you're from <laughs> Northern States, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so they would, they were hunters and they wanted their, the skins tanned. Uh, so I learned a lot about <laughs> marketing and how words are important and, and what people Why? interpret those words to mean are far more important than what I think those words mean as a business owner. So yeah, I learned a lot. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what tips do you have for balancing work and family life? One is absolutely love what you do as an entrepreneur. Um, if you hate what you do, it is not a good sign. And figure out how to get somebody else to do the aspects of your business that you hate. 
because there is, you will bring that shit home no matter what. Mm. I guarantee it. You can't not. To me, business is an extension of who you are as an individual. So whatever happens in your business is just a, a materialization of what's happening for you internally, uh, which sucks. <laughs> Trust me, it sucks. Uh, nobody wants that in their face, but it's kind of like having a three-year-old in front of you all the time. Whatever you say, they're saying back to you. Your business is doing the exact same thing. So you want to, one, make sure that your business is um, the best of you and not the worst of you. And so if you're not good at accounting, get somebody else to do your accounting. If you're not good at tech, get somebody else to do your tech as soon as possible. And, and whatever other elements, like I fired myself from being project management because I sucked at being project manager. I would have a high level conversation with somebody and build up their strategy. And then the techies would go, okay, well, you know, is that a, a three day event or a six day event? And I'm like, I, I don't know either. <laughs> I didn't ask her. Oh. I don't care. It's her choice. I was like, well, I can't write you up an event for that unless I know the times, the dates, the everything. I'm like, well, can you just go back to them? And it's like, well, then we have to have a whole nother meeting with them. And so I fired myself as project manager and we reorganized the business so that the project managers were getting the information from them that they needed to have. And when I had to step in and do a, a strategy session with somebody, we would do a strategy session solely. It was not project management. And so things like that, you want to get right in your business because like I said, you, you will take that home. It will impact your business immensely. The other thing is schedule out your, well, plan your lifestyle first before you plan your business. Your lifestyle is far more important than your business ever will be because you can always make money doing anything, anytime, anywhere. And when you wrap your head around that, that is power and freedom. So you plan your lifestyle first and go, okay, I don't want to work evenings and weekends. I will work nine to five and I will, you know, sniff it down like a bloodhound. I am okay with that. But after that, my family comes in. That is totally cool. Or if you're the opposite and you're like, hey, I just want to spend my day with my kids and I will work my butt off in the evening and on weekends and then they can go and play with their friends. That's totally cool too. It doesn't matter what it is, but you have to decide what that is. And then two, build your business around it because like I said, either one of those businesses can work phenomenally well. Somebody can have a nine to five business and it can make millions. Somebody can have a real estate business and it can make millions. It doesn't matter which way you decide to go, but that has to come first. And then block off your times. Make sure that your calendar has your kids sporting events in it. Make sure your calendar has those important things that you want to do and then plan around it. If you want two weeks at Christmas, take two weeks off at Christmas and plan that you're not going to be selling stuff and you're not launching stuff at Christmas. Like, and, and that you don't buy a seasonal business that <laughs> their busy season is Christmas. Like it's, it sounds kind of obvious, but I see so many people that do it and go, well, but I have to. And it's like, no, you don't have to do anything. That's why you became an entrepreneur is because you don't have to do anything. Like if you don't want to work at Christmas, don't buy a Christmas ornament store. <laughs> so, yeah. Or hire somebody else to work those two weeks, right? And and make sure that you're blocking off those times that you're making enough money in the beginning of December that you're not having to work the two weeks of Christmas holidays if that's your most important time that you want to take off. Figure out a way to make it happen and then do it. So make sure your most important things are timed off and then just stick to it. When it's your kid's recital, you're gone. You, I'm not here. I'm not answering my phone whatever problems happen, if the store is on fire and it's flooding, well, then I guess I'll deal with it at six o'clock when the recital's done because I'm going to recital. And that's how you have to uh, handle those things. Um, it's, it's not easy. It's not necessarily fun. You will make bad choices as a parent. And the best advice I ever got on that one was just make sure you're having fun with them because you're going to screw your kid up no matter what. So <laughs> oh. have fun with them. Oh. <laughs> mm, okay yo that's that's that was good that was good uh what you said like number one do this number two that that was good that was good so my, my last question for the rest of this sort of the podcast is what books do you recommend to read oh yes. well number one is always think and grow rich by napoleon hill it is the business bible Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It is all about understanding how your thoughts create your results. 
and you need to understand that your thoughts create results and your thoughts are for the most part um, environmental and for some parts developmental and uh, what the biggest thing to understand is whatever you've done up until now has got you to right here what you do from now on will get you to where you're going what it has nothing to do with what you have done up until now i could have been you know living by a lake and swimming every day for up until now that has no bearing on where i go from here and the same thing has to do with anything else that's going on in your life up until now you just change it now and go okay that's not the way we're, this is working anymore i'm reinventing myself and this is how i'm going to think and this is what i'm going to do and this is the results i'm going to get moving forward that is paramount in business so think and grow rich by napoleon hill the science of getting rich by wallace d wallace it's similar but a different way of saying it say it one more time the, la the, the, the science of getting rich by oh. wallace d waddles and um it's a shorter read. It's an easier read. And it's like you are in charge of your thoughts and your thoughts create your, your reality around you. The quick way to think of this is the house that you're in right now could not be there if it wasn't for the engineers, the architects, the construction crew, everybody that had designed it. Somebody looked at a bare naked field and went, hey, I can see this house being there. And they put into motion all the things that they needed to put into motion to eventually have the construction workers show up on site to build the house, to mm -hmm. have the realtor to sell it to you for you to move into that house. Thoughts create things. And when you can understand how your thoughts are creating the things in your life, then you have the ultimate power of being able to change your thoughts and change the results with which you find yourself, which is uh, another one of my friends put it this way. He said, entrepreneurship is the gateway to personal development, meaning that, or the gateway drug to personal development, meaning that you get that little sense of freedom and you get that little sense of control. And then you start to realize, hey, I am in control of this. I, I do have my freedom. And how do I, um, how do I master that? And when you figure out what you think about is important and and if you think about it as if somebody were watching me right now, hearing what I'm thinking and putting into place the things that need to happen in order for that to happen. Am I giving them the right information? Am I telling them what I really want to have happen? Or am I stressing out about things that I don't want to have happen? Am I worried about things or am I believing things that aren't true that I don't want to have happen? And if that's the case, just go, okay, what do I want to have happen? How do, what do I want to tell them to say, Hey, go make this happen for me and change them. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So right Zay, Zay, uh, yeah. Any, any more qu last questions? Well, um, you guys we, ran out of we, questions. We are, if I we, really yeah, we, Come on. I give you so much stuff. How can you possibly <laughs> run out of questions? You should have like 250,000 of them going, okay, I want to be here all day. Let's go right. build my business plan. We can do this. Yes. Um, okay. Hmm. I can talk business all day. I may have been like boring you to shit going, oh my God, really? If we talk any more strategy, you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I, I'm oh. a special kind of crazy. I'm like, I, no, I, can do this all day. I, I mean, it's pretty much like, you know, we can talk about the steps. Like, okay, you got your LLC. You can start. No, first, you need to start your business plan. Then you can get your LLC. Um, and then after it's like you know what what is your strategies behind that what is your plan of like marketing and well yeah. my other strategies for that is it totally depends so if you're going into real estate as an investing thing you want to make sure that you're setting your llc's up properly because um depending on if you buy and flip or if you buy and hold or if you do all sorts of things you really want to make sure that you're getting a hold of a, a lawyer to find out that you have the right structures in place. In the States, you guys have a phenomenal ability to be able to structure your businesses in such a way that it makes it tax advantageous 100% right off the get-go. Um, you want to, so here's another one for those of you who want to get your hobbies. In my classes, what I used to do is go, okay, get all your visas all your invoices and shit. What do you spend the most amount of money on in a month? 
What do you spend the money? If it's shoes, if it's cars, if it's whatever it is, figure out a way to make that a tax write off in your business. Because if you can make whatever you spend the most amount of money on in a month a business and that becomes your tax write off, then you may even get those things for free, which is ridiculous and awesome. So if you love traveling, if you love cars, if you love shoes, if you love whatever, there is a business model there where you can get those for free. And when you do spend money on them, that they're a tax write off, then you want to figure out whether or not you have the right entities in the right place in order to be able to facilitate um, that development. Okay, so Jupiter, you said, how did you get the funds to start your business? Well, well I got them from my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do, sugar girl, but I know. Yeah. <laughs> you're somebody's sugar, baby. I'm sure you might be able to get some money from them. Um, yeah. Teasing and having fun with you. There are so many ways to start your business. Um, and yes, absolutely, disposal <laughs> partnerships doing them is a great way to do it. Uh, and I'm a huge advocate of it. And why not? Um, and by the way, gals, most guys would love for their girls to start off and make an awesome business. And most of them, if you said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing, they will be right behind you and they will help you like through the roof. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid of that ever. And there is nothing wrong with that at all in any way, shape or form. If you got somebody that's supporting you, absolutely do it. Um, second of all is through your own wherewithal. So go and get a job and, and fund your side hustle. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's a book out there called uh, Side Hustle Millionaires. Awesome book about finding out whether or not your idea will actually can produce um, funding, <laughs> money. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes through everything. You can have a side hustle that you could get um, funding for that could sell to like... Um, that it's the intention of it is an exit strategy. So you're building it for the sole purpose of building a multi-million dollar business that you can sell to billionaires. Um, and then um, of course you can get financing depending on the idea. You can go to independence. I wouldn't recommend that certainly at first because you tend to sell your soul to the devil. Uh, they take over your business and, uh, and they have every right to. So be careful who you go into business with. Uh, if you can fund it yourself, absolutely do. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with bootstrapping a business. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is this is going to be the episode once again that I have to listen to this like three <laughs> times. <laughs> what did Definitely. I just say? Bootstrapping me and you're looking up words. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, uh -oh, you got another one? Struggling with grant proposal advice. Oh, grants are fun, aren't they? <laughs> so grants um, are not my forte, except for there is one that we do. But there's, so in our business, there are two Canadian grants that people can qualify for. And we will help them apply for those grants because we understand them well. If there's a grant out there that you don't understand, um, and you're trying to figure out how to do it, find somebody that that writes grants. So somebody in the universities, you may even, oh, another one, you can go to the universities and um, sometimes they'll have to do their, their thesis or things like that. And you can actually get student support to help you to uh, underwrite your grants. Uh, that one could actually be a really good one for doing that because the government bodies that, um, fulfill on those tend to want them written in a certain way so when they say what are your assets they don't mean it in the same way that I would if I was asking you what your assets are um, so you want to be able to write it in government ease it's kind of like legalese except for it's government wording um, yeah universities and google people that understand that stuff you might even find somebody in Fiverr that can help you with it believe it or not yeah. mm. Another okay. one. My partner is actually the one who invested in me and my spies. Yay. However, I'm still learning how to manage my money wisely. I like to shop. Yeah. You mean both, girl. Maybe you should start a shopping <laughs> vlog. Yes. Start a shopping vlog. So I've had fantasies about doing like things like interior design and um, executive shopping. Because I just love to shop. I feel so good when I go shopping, but it's not because I'm buying. And 
I don't feel like crap after I've bought something. So if you feel like crap after you bought something, that's an addiction. That's a problem. Go get help with that. But if that's not the case and you're just going, hey, this is really fun and you're not racking up the credit card debt, don't be doing oh. that either. But if you start a shopping vlog and you like certain products, start doing openings, like get an Instagram account and start doing openings on stuff that you love to do and show people how to use the thing. Because I can't tell you how many times I've gone to YouTube to find out how something seemingly simple works like an eyeliner and you're thinking like how do you not know how to use an eyeliner anybody that's ever put eyeliner on should know how to use an eyeliner guys if you've ever tried to put on eyeliner you know what i'm talking about it is not as easy as it looks <laughs> some women have this down pat and it's like god that looks so good how do you do that i put it on i look like a three-year-old trying to poke my eye out with a black marker it is not fun. So if you're good at those things, start up your thing and start going out and saying, hey, what kind of things would I love to buy? And approach those companies and say, hey, um, um, my audience would be really interested in your M36 KRS. Would you mind uh, sending me one so that I can see what it's like and I'll do an, an opening for you? Mm. They may send them to you. It yeah. works because that that is good marketing for companies when when you get good at being able to present that and to show it in its best light and how it works and how to use them. That is gold right there for those companies. So they actually have a very much a very an interest in you using their products and showing people how to use them. Gotcha. We are pressed on time, everyone. So we are. No, no. And she didn't think she got make it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely pressed on time. Uh, so now for advertising purposes. Um, <laughs> the box opening, the revealing party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so how can someone be a client, uh, advertise your business, uh, social media handling, everything? Awesome. So everything is under Michelle Nedelec, I, I except for Facebook. I am unfortunately Michelle Nedelec one because I was one of the original Facebookers out there. And then five people joined with the same name and from different countries. And then they all amalgamated as one international company. I got stuck with Michelle Nedelec one. Every other platform, I am Michelle Nedelec. I go to michellenedelec.com. See all of my podcasts. I have five podcasts that are super fun. The Business Ownership Podcast. We talk to solopreneurs, do a ton of fun stuff. Well, the second one is I have a special called Seven to Eight. It's for people that have made seven and eight figure businesses and want to help you achieve the same. Go check those out. Those are awesome. I have the Little Blue Pill for Business. It's all about getting it up and keeping it up. And of course, we're talking about revenue and profit. But if you like a little tongue in cheek and not just physically, this podcast is for you. So if you have a sense of humor and you want to talk business, that one's a good one too. I have happy to offend you just because you're offended by something doesn't mean you're going to die from it. In fact, if you understand why other people aren't offended by it, we can actually create better connections and community and do a lot of fun stuff. So I, that one's a lot of fun. And then I do the bad girls on business, which is the only safe scene and consensual podcast where we will be as nice, naughty or as kinky as our clients are, as our guests want us to be. Uh, that one is also a rated show and a ton of fun. So if you want business podcast. That's me. I'm on Twitter and I'm getting on to TikTok. I have one video on there right now. That's all about procrastination and not doing things. So, so if you want to follow me on that one video, that'd be awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Do, do we have time to talk about that real quick to drop gems on procrastination? Oh man. <laughs> Dang. Oh, can, can you talk real quick? Dang. <laughs> No, it's well, like I'm just putting off doing any video for my TikTok. I'm procrastinating this. So if you want to procrastinate with me, follow me. That's that's my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to awarenessstrategies.com. We do the tech automation done for you, as I said earlier. So if you know somebody that is struggling with their tech stacks and they're going, oh, my God, this is just giving me a hell of a headache. Uh, absolutely reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Doing good, doing good. There you go. There you go. So there you have it. So I really want to talk about procrastination, Zay. <laughs> you want to talk about procrastination? She wants to put off putting off Have the end of the show. About because it real you know, quick. we don't really need to end the show. We could put that off a little longer. You want to talk about it? Talk about it real quick. <laughs> uh, we do have press on all right, five minutes. All right, so five <laughs> minutes to talk about and then after the the conclusion. The conclusion. <laughs> the conclusion <laughs> 
what is your final thoughts and then that's the end of the episode all right all right all right <laughs> hilarious my thoughts on procrastination are one don't ever do a talk on procrastination that was the hardest talk i ever wrote in my entire life was to talk about procrastination because i kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off <laughs> the irony of it was spectacular oh man. oh man we we will put off shit like none other it's crazy the biggest thing to me is when you're procrastinating on something is if there was something i could do about this right now what would it be and mm. and just like get through all the I get it. There's a ton of stuff getting in the way of that. But if there's one thing you can do right now and just to overcome it, what might it be? And then odds are that one thing is the thing that you should be doing. The issue is that when we get out of our comfort zone, um, the fear comes up, the, oh, shit, they're not going to like me. They're not, I can't do this. All that stuff comes up. Then we don't want to do the thing. But we only get that when we're doing the thing that's close to getting us closer to our goals. So if we're putting off a phone call, it's the phone call we need to make. If we're putting off writing an email, it's the email we need to write. Whatever the thing is that we're trying to avoid is the thing that we should be doing. And not thinking of it as like video, I have to be perfect at it. It's just go do it, record it. You can delete it. Nobody's mm -hmm. saying you have to go to the world just because you record it, throw it on your phone, do it, and then decide what you want to change about it and how you want to improve it. When it comes to that phone call, and making that phone call, the best advice I ever got on that was something ridiculous, like 94% of the things we worry about never happen. If it's a phone call you're worried about, they're probably not gonna answer the phone anyways. You're gonna have to leave a voicemail. So what are you gonna say if, you, if that happens? Two, if they don't really care about what you're doing, then so be it. What's, you know, why are you struggling over the thing? And an understanding that just because we have a story going on in our head, Odds are it's going to be 100% opposite to it or a 180 from it of, of what we expect it to happen is what actually is going to happen. So what is that 180? And then expect that result. Like I said earlier, if you had somebody eavesdropping on your thoughts and going, hey, we're going to make this happen, which ones do you want us to think about? It's not the, oh, my God, they're going to hate me. They're not going to like what I have to say. It's the, they're going to love me. This is going to be awesome. They're going to think this is the world's greatest idea and they're going to jump on it. That's what you want to be focused on and then go make the call. Yeah, let's go. Okay. That's that's what I'm talking about. Go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So this episode is gonna be in the history books. I, I I'm I'm sure of it. This one was a dope <laughs> episode. I'm I'm telling you right now. Yes. Yeah, so, so um final thoughts and then we can close it out. Okay. Mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um to me. One, you have to understand that being an entrepreneur is the bravest thing you can ever do. Firefighters mm -hmm. run into buildings that are on fire because they're trained to do that. Bodybuilders go out and get on stage and show their muscles in the you know, itty bitty clothes because they're trained to work out. They know what they're doing. When you're an entrepreneur, you don't have a freaking clue what you're doing. You have no clue. You have a compulsive urge at best and an inkling that it might work out. And... And because when you go out, your business is a personification of who you are, you're putting it all out online. And that is awesome and amazing. And what bravery is, is questioning and moving against all of the conditioning that you've had. So if you're taught, don't go in the water, don't go in the water, don't go in the water, entrepreneurial says, let's go swim. Yeah. And you're going like, this is insane. This is ridiculous. But I guarantee it. If you have that thought and you have that compulsive desire to go and do that, that you're going to learn how to swim. And in fact, you're probably going to be amazing at swimming. In fact, you're probably be so good naturally at swimming that you don't even really have to think about how you did the thing. And other people will tell you, well, you have to wear the right clothes. You have to go at the right time of day when it's the right temperature. You have to do this. And you just want to go out and swim. Just go out and swim. Just go and do your thing. You're going to do awesome at it. You're going to find the resources that you need when you need them and just continually focus on, I got this or somebody else has this and I'm going to go and find them and I'm going to go and implement it. Everything you need is around you and just keep looking for it and finding those answers. You will find them. Mm. Boom. Mic drop. Like that. That's it. Oh, All right, y'all. That's the end of the episode. That I was yes, definitely my job. What you did, Michelle. I ain't go. I ain't go for it. I was. Definitely... <laughs> All right. So that's the end of the episode, y'all. And that's it. We are out. Peace. All right. <laughs>
right? 